probably my biggest thing that I took away from that entire thing is no matter how bad a day gets, there's always some good in it. And that Mm. people just let one bad thing ruin a whole day. And that has helped me take these moments of deep darkness and be like, hey, just remember, this is a moment. Welcome, everybody, to The Chris Harder Show, where we are making you unapologetic about your pursuit of success, knowing that when good people like you make good money, they can then do great things. My name is Chris Harder, and several times per week, I will bring you epic guests, solo episodes, and every single tool, trick, and skill set you need to grow your business, grow your money mindset, and to grow your wealth to levels that you have never reached before. I've ended up in a unique place in life where I've got the experience, the connections, and all of the secrets that it takes to be successful. And I'm lifting the curtain to reveal it all to you in an effort to help put you in a position of abundance so great that you can then be as generous as possible. So let's lock arms and let's get started. And we're back with another episode of He Said, She Said. All right. So we thought we'd mix it up a little bit today. We've got our friends over here. They've become friends over the past couple of years. But they started out as individuals that found us by listening to our podcast. And I think you're going to love that story. I love this full circle moment. Right. So we're sitting here with Brianne and Danny Hafelman. They own an incredible podcast production company called The Good in Media. And before we, you know, fast forward to their company and the cool stuff that they do, I really want to start by telling the story. I should say having them tell the story, how Danny found Lori's podcast in a time of need. You mind telling that part? Yeah, I'm happy to. So on our end, like you have to go back to 2015, 2016 for me. And Brianne and I had already been married. We got married when we were 18 and 19. So family was Mm -hmm. well established. We had two kids at the time. And I found myself not having the language to understand that I was depressed and Mm -hmm. moving quickly towards suicidal. And through, (laughs) I had a door knocking job at the time where I was knocking door to door selling alarms and basically reached a point where I just could not function anymore. Like I couldn't hold a job. And like, I think everyone, like at at least dudes, you should go and do a door knocking job for a summer if you can, Mm. because you will learn so much so quickly. It's insane. But doing it while you're suicidal, not recommended. (laughs) That (laughs) That, that became a different thing. (laughs) <laughs> and at the end of 2015, going into 2016, I could not hold it together anymore. And mm-hmm. I basically, we lost all our income. And we wound up having to lose our house, lose cars, and move in with my sister. So we left Phoenix, went to Houston to live with her. And I kind of made it my my mission after a few months of just truly not being able to figure out what I was feeling. Mm. I made it my mission to figure out like what happiness meant. Mm. And that was where you guys came in. One of the biggest things that I didn't have was hope. And I like the more people I talk to that struggle with mental health issues and things like that, the common theme is they don't feel like they can get better. The hope is gone. Mm. And I think when you're coming from a place of being hopeless, like why even try to get better? Because you just can't. For me, that was the biggest struggle. And Brianne and I had really good conversations that, you know, helped me just start to see that like you can get better. And it started with me going to a library and realizing that for free, I could download audiobooks. Mm. So I started listening to audiobooks, but it was really nothing specific. Yeah. And then I started trying to figure out, okay, what is happiness? And I, I came across, you know, two people that made a major impact, you guys being probably the bigger one. But essentially, I, start, I typed in the word happy mm. into the podcast app. And your podcast came up, Earn Your Happy. Wow. Wow. And for me, it was not even listening to the podcast, just Mm. reading the title Mm. was a click moment for me because the idea that you have to earn your happiness, because everyone likes to say like, hey, like you, you deserve happiness. And like, you know, from a God perspective, you probably do. Have you done anything in your life to make you proud of yourself? Mm. That's a different conversation, but I had never seen it through that kind of lens. And at the time, I didn't even know if that was what you meant by it, but that was how it was. I, that was, how, <laughs> yeah. that was, how, that was actually that was yeah. the whole thing. <laughs> like, I, I needed that at the time. And it was something where I, I heard that and I was like, oh my gosh, like, okay, what are the things I could do? And I also came across Lewis Howes at the time. Mm. And he had told his story of losing everything and living on a sister's couch. 
And I literally listened to him tell that story while I was sitting on my sister's couch. Wow. And it was just such a, a cool thing where it was like, okay, if someone else can be in this point and get out of it, I can too. And that really started the snowball effect of how do we fix this thing? So that was how we really found you. Wow. I love hearing this story because I struggled with the feeling of happiness for a very long time. Like even halfway through the podcast, it was like the realization that the things I do throughout the day are giving me a result. And even just what I didn't, even what I put together with having the podcast is like, oh, what I'm thinking about during the day. Like you can even do things that should make you happy. Mm -hmm. But if you're thinking different thoughts while doing the things that should make you happy, then you can get very confused. Like I'm doing things that people are saying should make me happy and I'm still not feeling happy because you realize there's even more behind it, which I'm sure you also realized. So that's the whole thing of earning it is like you have to truly earn it with not only what you're doing, but also what you're thinking and who you're around. So that's why that makes me so happy that you found it, that other people are finding it who are kind of in that same boat, because I don't know, I don't know what it is. What was it just in your family? Was it like you didn't see that or you never talked about that or? Without going super deep, like my parents split the first time when I was 11. And it very much even if it wasn't true mentally, I had to step into kind of like man of the house mode. Mm. And as far as what I understood masculinity and all these things at the time was like, men don't really have feelings. Mm. And it wasn't even like now where you're like, Oh, I'm stoic. It was just like, we just don't talk about those things. And so I really shut off my feelings for the, I don't know, from then until about 25 when I completely lost it. And I, and now I'm kind of on the other side. I have a hard time holding in feelings. (laughs) It's kind of a different, a different thing. But for me, it was a lot more of how do I stay strong? And I thought I had to be strong for everyone, Mm -hmm. but I didn't realize. And like, again, like I never really had anyone model the language or the, you know, the behavior of you have to take care of you too. I think everyone in my life to a degree was kind of like the martyr who was just like, you know, I sacrificed my dream so I could take care of the family and I do this. And I like, and it was just like, Mm -hmm. well, this is just what you do. Mm -hmm. Until you start to see models of people who are doing other things. And then you realize like, hey, maybe there's more to this. Mm -hmm. And when I was hitting that like lowest point, I just realized that like there were different things in my life that I was living, but I didn't believe in them. And some of that was church. Some of that was like, there, there was a lot of factors in that, but a lot of it stemmed from, I didn't think I was supposed to have these feelings. And until I actually opened up and told the world on a, you know, a Facebook live and an Instagram, like different posts, like, by the way, I'm going through this Mm. and I'll quickly say it, but essentially her and I had not had an income in months. And then the old factory that I used to work in sent us a check saying like, Hey, you have a 401k or they just sent a letter saying you have a 401k with like four or five grand. You want to cash it out? And I was like, yes, please. (laughs) We've had nothing. (laughs) And then, so we cashed that out. And then when that came, you know, we went on a date and someone posted, your life looks perfect. They had no idea that we were, you know, I'm suicidal. We've lost everything. We're living with my sister. And I told Brienne and the family, just give me a few minutes. I got to go do something. And I went into the bedroom and I did a Facebook live just stating, you guys are seeing a highlight reel. And I I was just trying to not add negativity to the internet. So I didn't talk about it. I wasn't trying to like portray something different. But when I realized it was, it just broke me. Mm -hmm. So I I laid it out over like a six, seven minute video just saying, this is what's really going on. And I had dozens of messages of people just saying like, dude, me too. But no one talks about that. And I can't tell you the release, just the weight on my shoulders of like, we all have to hide this and this is shameful Mm -hmm. and it's whatever. And now it's like, no, I have dozens of people that are also in community with me saying like, hey, me too. How are you getting through it? What are you doing? And it just, it also gave me such a bigger purpose. Wow. Wow. Brianna, I got to ask you. So you guys, uh, you know, your husband's suicidal at the time. You lost everything. You're living at his sister's house. What were you thinking during this? How were you feeling? I was feeling everything that you would think you would feel at first, Mm -hmm. right? You see your spouse, the person that you love so much going through just one of the hardest things and you feel for them. Mm -hmm. I just like felt for just the empathy was that first feeling. And then after a while, it turned into, at the time, not understanding, right? Like we've been able to, to learn a lot through this process. But in the beginning, it was like, are we not good enough to get better for? 
Wow. You know, like those were some of the feelings like like his seeing him feel hopeless. I was definitely at the time in victim mode. So I'm looking at him and I'm going, you're my rock. You're my person that usually is the one that is supporting me and the family. And so at first I was like that nurturer, you know, and, and had empathy. But after a while, I was like, forget me, like are our kids not good enough to, to get healthy and better for. And I didn't understand it. I just like had no grasp at the time. And luckily, I think the thing that kept everything together was our communication mm-hmm. the whole time. Like, cause what there that were like just for people that need it. What, yeah. what did your communication look like at the time? Yeah. So, I mean, it really looked like him just being like, Hey, I'm not going to hide anything from you. Like I'm re- having a really, really bad day. And he would open up to me and just say, actually, it's completely the opposite of what you think. <laughs> if I can share it, like there were times where he would look at me and go, he's like, I really feel like you, you know, Brianne, you and the kids, like, you deserve better than me. Mm. And that's where a lot of that was coming from. So me understanding that it was like, okay, like, thanks for letting me in. Cause I think if he would have closed off and shut me out and I had no clue what was going on in his mind, there were definitely times, even with our open communication that I was like, do I leave his feeling of hopelessness mixed with mine? And, and at the time thinking I couldn't do anything to change the situation. Cause of course I can't change no. him. Mm-hmm. Like I couldn't change his mental state. Like I could only focus on myself. And so the, those were real thoughts. It was like, do I pack up the kids and do we, do we leave? Yeah. And luckily that communication stayed open and seeing him go, okay, like, let's listen to this personal development. Let's listen to this podcast. Let's read this book. Let's just have open communication together. Like that honestly kept me going. And I know every single person has had those moments where they're going through something and they're like, I don't know if I could do another day of this. Yep. You know, where you wake up and you're like, I like physically, you feel like you don't have the mental, spiritual, emotional strength to go through it. And that's what it felt like, honestly, for a few months Wow. until it was like, I kind of channeled that, you know, all the stages of grief. Like I was grieving yeah. over, over what you, you know, you think your life is going to be like, and it's definitely not, you don't think I'm going to get married. We're going to live happily ever <laughs> after with our beautiful two kids in his sister's house, you know, yeah. with a husband that's like, I'm literally worried that I'm, am I going to lose him? And so it was just like, it just that open communication and just being like, yeah, this is really shitty. This is where I'm at. Honestly, mm-hmm. honesty is what it was really like, like being able to ask each other, this might hurt you, but this is this is what's really going on with me. So I've got to ask, you know, fast forward, it's probably seven, eight years now. Is this why you guys started the podcast production company is because a podcast saved your life and, and turned things around for you guys? Or what was, how did you go from where you were at there to using a podcast to, I don't want to say save your life, but turn to when you were suicidal to deciding that you guys are going to help amplify other people's voices? Yeah. I mean, of course, like anything, it doesn't happen all at once, but I tell people all the time now that podcasts were therapy and mentors before we could afford therapy and mentors. Mm -hmm. And that's been super, super powerful for us. And I'll, I'll just speak to maybe someone's listening and their spouse is the one that's not super open to personal development. I was actually that person of the two of us. And it took, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I was the one that was like, you know, he's coming to me and luckily I did open up little by little, but I mean, you've, paved the way for a lot of what we've done. And I've been able to be that supportive role in, in my own way in our marriage and in our business. But yeah, it really started with just learning. Mm-hmm. Cause, cause when we were going through this, having a business was not on our radar. Yep. The goal at that point was even just like, let's just get quote, good jobs and be able to move forward and eventually set a little nest egg aside. And you know what I mean? The whole American dream, as far as just working for someone else. And I think this is why we're so freaking grateful to you guys is because not only did you show us that whole happiness piece of working on our personal development, but what's possible to even start a business. Like, mm. you know, we didn't even, we didn't go to business school. We went yeah. to freaking podcast school. So I'll let you speak to the business too, but. Yeah. And I think she nailed it. I think the biggest thing for me is I had one really big lesson, like probably my biggest thing that I took away from that entire thing is no matter how bad a day gets, there's always some good in it. And that mm. people just let, one bad thing ruin a whole day. And that has helped me take these moments of deep darkness and be like, hey, just remember, this is a moment. I could walk out of this room right now and like go see my kids. It's a totally different energy. Like Mm -hmm. it's there's let's not let moments ruin a whole days. Mm -hmm. And the more you compound bad whole days, like it's going to compound one way or the other. So you Mm -hmm. can start to feed your brain the positive side and let it start to 
you know, see things in a more positive way, or you can, you know, allow yourself to sit and spiral. And for a long time, I just let myself sit and spiral because I didn't think that it could be better. Mm. Hopefully in hearing, you know, that there is hope that it does get better if you seek it out. Mm -hmm. someone takes that step and goes and does that because I think the reason we care about the business and I've I've told, I've shared this with Chris, but I'm like, I don't care about building a media company. That, that is not my passion, but I do care deeply about impacting millions of people and helping them stay. Mm -hmm. And my voice on my own podcast and the things that I do, I can reach so many people, but there are going to be people that resonate with you, Lori, that won't resonate with me. And the same that Chris they won't resonate with Lord. Like Mm -hmm. we all have individual people that we're meant to reach. I really believe that. I want to encourage people to use their voices so that they can actually get to those people who need them. And I, I know that like my voice could probably reach thousands, if not millions, but if I'm behind a hundred different brands that are all reaching thousands, if not millions, how much bigger is my impact? Mm. That's what I believe in. Mm. I love that so much. And now, Brian, I'm just picturing him listening to my podcast and you being like, who's that bitch? Uh, <laughs> Not going to lie, it was kind of like that. I was like, I've been te- we even talked about this earlier today. I was like, when I give you advice, okay, and you don't listen, but here's here's this chick. No, trust me. But, trust, so that's well, the, that's the, our conversation. So I'm like, okay, so like what I've been telling you, but okay, great. Well, the, the funny thing, we don't, we don't have to go deep on this one because we, I know these are shorter episodes, but you also were at a pivotal point in a different part in our life where I had known that I no longer wanted to be a part of our church, mm, but I didn't know yeah. how to say that out loud. <laughs> and I was, we were on a road trip and I don't know if I recommend or don't recommend, but on the road trip, I had already decided again, like I'm in full honesty mode. This is after yeah. the rebuild has started. I do not hide things anymore. Mm. I had committed to, if she ever asked me if I believe in the church again, I would just tell her I don't. And I was very aware that that could, I would lose my marriage, you know, and we're on a road trip and we're listening to something that you guys had put out. And she turned to me and she was like, I think you give more value to the opinions of them than the people in our church. Do you even believe in the church anymore? Mm. And I was like, "Mm." Like, Perfect time to ask this kind of question too, like, right? We've like got in three the, more hours left of this drive. Middle. What do I say here? <laughs> um, but I, I, I told her, I was like, no, I don't, you know? Mm-hmm. So, and like you guys unknowingly were kind of the, the impetus to like her being open to like, mm-hmm. all right, I want to listen to the personal development he's listening to. Cause I want to at least be able to be on the same page. Yeah, I want to understand yeah. why is he giving value to these things? And it was just, I don't know. There was two really big moments in our life that you guys were completely unaware of, but like, well, I am there. so glad you're thriving right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we're, we're I would so feel fun. really bad if you were. It's <laughs> <laughs> incredible. You know, all this circles back to the power of podcasting and mm-hmm. why it's important to amplify your message when you have one. And you've done, I, I really want to point out to people who are like in the beginning of their journey. Yeah. You went from suicidal to then questioning the specific religion that you were in. And you don't have to share it, which one, but, you know, a very specific one to then saying, wait, I want to amplify other people's voices, hence starting your business. And you had never had a business before to then saying, how do I scale this business? And you got yourself to a point where you could invest in some help. And that's when you showed up in a way that we could notice you. Mm -hmm. You showed up in one of our entry level masterminds at the time. And the all I could think about sitting here the whole time as you're describing your low point was I don't recognize this guy he's describing because the way you showed up, remember there's like 110 people in this online mastermind at the time. We'd do calls with about 55 Zoom people on Zoom at a time. But every time this guy with a big smile and great questions mm-hmm. and a bright Hawaiian shirt <laughs> or a bright shirt of some sort <laughs> always happy when was gone. always yes. there. And of the 55 Zoom boxes, yours always stood out as, oh, I like this guy. Oh, this is the guy who has the the happy, positive energy that I gravitate towards. So it's so weird for me to hear where you started, because by the time you made it on our radar, you were like a, a beaming light that people were attracted to. Was that a choice how you showed up on there? Did you have to be like, oh, I want to show up this way? It's hilarious to me to hear that that was how you yeah. guys perceived me, because I was scared shitless and didn't think <laughs> I asked a good question. So, I, I, but I... It's definitely a thing where when we made it out of Houston mm-hmm. and like, cause we, we got back to Phoenix and I was like, I don't want to build in Houston. I want to go back to Phoenix. We made it back and we were in a really unique position and I don't think it takes this, but I think it was helpful. No one knew us mm-hmm. and we, we didn't move back to our old area. 
we we moved to a completely new area mm-hmm. and I really had a like we had real communication around like I can choose to show up as the Danny that everyone else knew before or I can show up in a totally new way and just let people mm-hmm. see who I am becoming and I consciously had said like I'm not like I, I was open about mental health but I was not going to be someone who was a victim of things and I I was very intentional about especially in communities that I respected and wanted to be a part of I'm gonna try to just show up and smile even if I'm scared shitless and none Mm. of this makes sense to me I'm just gonna try to make an impact and especially like you guys being who you were and unknowingly having been such a big part of our story I I wanted to show up for you guys you know I wanted to be able to like I wanted to serve even from afar in a way of like even if I ask good questions Hopefully that gets noticed Mm -hmm. and hopefully that encourages other people in the group to ask good questions or to take something from that. Cause I knew eventually if I served enough, hopefully my original goal Mm -hmm. was to be able to interview you guys on my podcast one day. (laughs) So the fact (laughs) now it's the other way around. (laughs) Well, and it's the other way around. And the fact that I, I'm very grateful to say that like, I I actually just consider you a friend and I have Mm -hmm. like a, a true relationship with you. And I'm like, Dude, you have no idea what can change in a decade. Like mm-hmm. we're not even a decade out. Mm-hmm. And the circle of influence that used to be just the people on my, you know, my podcast list, a lot of them are either in my world or one connection away mm-hmm. now. And it just from us showing up and saying like, hey, like, doesn't matter what the room is, but I'll show up and I'll try to just be a, a positive energy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And if I can be that, something good will happen if I keep showing up. And I think mm-hmm. that's about as much as I thought it through, but like, Sounds like a lot now that I realize I've been talking for five minutes, but like <laughs> it, it was very much a like, I just want to add value to them somehow. I want to add one more thing, one more way that you're adding value that's very important to people, I think, that want to be in the room, but maybe don't have the funds at the moment to be in the room or something like that. You came to us, you're like, hey, I love these round tables that you're doing. Could I be in the room and film it and turn it into content for you in exchange for being in there learning and being around the positive energy? And I thought, what a brilliant way to do an equal energy exchange. Mm-hmm. And you get what you need. We get what we need. And it's instead furthered our friendship and furthered our relationship because now we've gotten to spend that much more time together. So, so for, for those of you listening, you're like, well, how do I get in the room? Maybe you've got something you can leverage mm-hmm. of value that the other people need so that it's an equal energy exchange. But I just wanted to point that out for, for people's benefit as well. Brian, oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, I think that's really important because you and I have done things like this in our careers over and over. And I, I think it's one of the fastest ways to get on, on people's radars and you're not even doing it from like a, Oh, what can I get? It's truly like, wow, being able to be among those people. And also you want, like, I I truly know your hearts are to add value. And I Mm -hmm. feel that. So I think for people listening when they're like, Oh, well, I don't have the money for it. Okay. Really look at how you can add value without, you know what I mean? Without having to spend the money. Yeah. Brian, I want to ask you about podcasting because, you know, here we're talking about the power of getting your story out there, no matter what your platform is. Is it happiness? Is it mental health? Is it finances? Everybody needs to learn from somebody. And, and you said so well, they're not going to learn from their spouse necessarily. But if someone else says the same thing because on a podcast, then they'll start learning. So mm-hmm. you've taken that mission. You're helping other people produce their podcasts. What's important to starting a podcast today? Like if someone's like, okay, damn it, that's it. I'm doing it what's important in getting started? How difficult is it really? And how many shows a week should they be doing? Like walk us through the basics of getting your message out there. Yeah. So I have, there's two pieces to that answer. And I'm going to start with this one because it's what we've been talking about is who are you serving? Mm -hmm. Because you could go get your cute little microphone and you could set up everything and, and have the most beautiful setup and all of that. But if you don't know who you're speaking to and who you're serving, like you guys live this. You serve others on such a massive scale that it comes back to you. I know that's something that you guys believe in and and so do we. And so it's like, and, and same thing with us coming into the room and saying, or Danny offering to come and do the round tables, how can I serve you? Mm-hmm. So it's just knowing who do you serve and then being able to actually offer value to that person. Mm-hmm. I think that's something for everyone to know based on their story. And most often it's going to be, okay, where were you six months ago? Mm-hmm a year ago, a decade ago, okay, what were the things that you were struggling with at that time? And then being able to help that person. I think we overcomplicate it when it comes to, okay, who, you know, who should I make content for? It's you. 
just a few steps back. Mm -hmm. So I think that's an important piece. And then also when you get into, I mean, we could get into like specifics as far as like, you better freaking be doing video. When you start your podcast, to me, you ask how hard is it? Go to an agency. Reach out to a friend that's DIY their podcast by themselves if you're not to that point where you can invest in an agency. But I think, again, we just overcomplicated. And my goal for what we do is like, let me make it as simple as possible for you as a podcast host so that you can just be in that mode of serving, serving your audience, connecting with them. I've got two bounce back questions to that. The first one is, what is the least expensive you think someone could start a podcast? And then if they want an agency to take them from, you know, idea to rocking and rolling, what should they budget for that? You want to know the cheapest, cheapest Yep, option? the cheapest, cheapest. If they're going to DIY, DIY, whatever the heck that phrase is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I always get it wrong. <laughs> he doesn't, you, you don't do that. No, you got a cell phone. You're listening to this podcast on a cell phone. That's all you need and like a hosting platform. So literally, I mean, and for Danny, I know, I'm sure you're, as he's the audio, audio snob of the two of us, and he'd probably be like, what? But I mean, no, it's still true. It's still, the I, mean, I still record doing, some mine in my car. On see, my there cell you phone. go. It on your cell phone? cell phone right now. You <laughs> it, it, it removes the barrier of getting things done. If you have a bunch of barriers and you know you have to set up lights and set up cameras and set up microphones and all the things, it's really easy to not do. Not to mention, maybe your house isn't clean. Maybe the dogs are running around or your kids are home. If your goal is, I know I need to serve and you need to do it quickly and cheaply, your phone works really, really well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Record a voice note. It's like 20 bucks a month to have a hosting platform Mm -hmm. and upload the audio, you know? And what if they want an agency to do that? What should they budget start to finish? I mean, it just depends with working with us. I mean, again, we're trying to make it as easy and simple as possible. It's such a no brainer to when you look at your hourly rate and what you're needing to spend, whether it's a mutual friend of ours, I was talking to Kara Ayala, and she's like, I'm going to spend my time this way, either it's going to bring me joy and pour back into me, or it's going to make me money. Mm -hmm. And so like, that's how she makes those decisions. And so if you're to that point where you're like, okay, I do have, you know, money to invest in this, and it's worth either being able to have that time to pour into you, or grow your business, then hire someone like us. And you know, you can spend five grand to get started. If you really want to blow up your content, your message and reach more people, you know, you can spend 2,500 to to three grand. And it's not anything crazy to be able to set that aside to have all of that done for you. And you're in that mode of just like Mm -hmm. serving your audience. It's not, those are not big numbers. I understand they're big numbers to some people, but some people right now might be saying, oh my God, wait, I could have somebody else do this editing and podcast start start to finish for me in kind of a bigger way for like five grand. That's, well, that's awesome. well, what do people spend on on marketing? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like that that is your podcast is your top of your funnel. Mm-hmm. You know, it's your way to add people to your email list and and they're directly coming to you and you know they're your people because they're clicking on your podcast and saying yes to you every single time they press yeah. play. Mm-hmm. So Danny, you're Mr. Video. Why should we take the extra step of, you know, getting video content while we record and what's the easiest way to do it? Go where the people are, meaning not everyone knows what a podcast is, even today. And people know what YouTube is. So if you can get yourself on video in a way that allows you to actually show up on YouTube, Mm. now you're searchable. Not to mention YouTube is, you know, owned by Google. Mm -hmm. So when someone types in how to do X and you have a podcast titled how to do X, now you have an opportunity to be found. So no matter what, I'm always a big believer on video just because it also lets you multi-purpose things. You may take the full video of the conversation, but can we take five to 15 different little highlights from it? And now you have your social media content for the month. Mm. I think that's one of the biggest things too, is just making it easy on yourself. Like if I show up and I'm bringing the whole studio to you, we're going to have three cams, we're going to have lightings, we're going to have overkill everything, but it's going to look beautiful. Mm -hmm. But again, that's not where it starts. Your phone is really, really awesome. And if that's just you setting up a tripod and you might not even publish the whole video, but you publish the clips because you caught them. That's the easiest thing. Mm. We're using, you know, DJI microphones right now. I think this set is like 350 bucks, if Mm -hmm. that. And this connects to the phone. And if we want to, like, this could be it. This could Mm -hmm. be the whole thing. Like Brian and I were planning to do a lot of travel in the next year or two. And the goal was, we set these microphones connected to the phone and this is what we have and just make it easy. Mm -hmm. So the barrier to entry on video, again, like if you're going to have an agency do it, it might be a couple grand a month. It might be like, it can range really high. You guys know this. When people are trying to do cinema quality, it's a whole different ballgame. 
But I don't think that's what's necessary anymore. I also think that on like Instagram and these different things, if you have the super produced piece of content, it doesn't necessarily get as much traction sometimes because people are like, oh, this is an ad. Mm -hmm. You know, Mm -hmm. sometimes your cell phone is better than you think. And I think people need to lean into that a little more. Okay, so for those people who maybe aren't ready to do a podcast, but I think every person listening should be getting consistent with content. And I just want to share, it was a goal of mine this last year to get really consistent with content. Just show up every single day on, I picked one platform for the most part. I show up on my podcast, but then Instagram, I show up every single day. So kind of like quote tile, real quote tile, tile real is kind of kind of my flow. And I will tell you that so many people have been saying, oh my God, you're everywhere. I've noticed that my things are selling out. So what I what I share ends up selling out a lot faster. There's a lot more engagement on everything that I'm doing. And I will tell you, I would say 80% of my content is just okay. Maybe more than that. Maybe 90% is like just kind of like, uh, I'm like, eh, that's okay. Like I had a shit one yesterday that got 75,000 views. It's so weird. But my entire point is consistency and how important it is. And so for anybody listening, I know that you also have something else that you have come out with that you're going to do for people who need to be more consistent. What is that? So we've we've developed something that we would just want to call 20 questions. And I think everyone kind of gets that concept because we've all kind of played the game 20 questions. Mm -hmm. But in real life, like how do we make it easy for your business? Because again, your job is to be the business owner, not to be the content creator. Mm -hmm. So for us, we want to be able to come to you or arrange a studio, whatever that makes sense. But how can we make it so that your job is to show up, you talk with us for two to three hours, and then you're done and you have two to three months worth of content. Mm. That's the goal of everything. So the way that that looks for us is when you show up for 20 questions, it's 20 questions. Realistically, it's probably going to be 35 to 40 with me. And it's me getting to kind of interview you. And then we go in, we actually do research on what is important to you. What are you launching? What are the things that you have coming up so that we're asking you relevant topics, but we're making it so that as you get to sit with us, We're getting to capture so much that you're walking away with not only highlight reels for Instagram and TikTok and YouTube shorts, but you're also walking away with longer form content so that if you want to have short podcasts and things like that, you'll walk away with those too that'll live on YouTube, they'll live Mm -hmm. on the podcast apps. And all of that really just is like, we do the legwork so that you, the owner who runs 10 different things and is trying to do everything, now you can show up for three, four hours and you're probably done for the quarter if you do it right Mm -hmm. yeah you get two to three months worth of you know content out of this here's here's why i like it our social media manager kaylee i I feel bad for her because she's like i need 10 videos like they're past due i'm like so i'll sit down and i'll look in the camera and it feels like pressure on what the hell am i supposed to say in this thing Mm -hmm. i hate it it feels so inauthentic to me but you give me a q a setting which is what you're basically replicating I will go all day long right put me in front of a group a mastermind let me answer questions i will crush it that's when I'm, i'm in my zone this replicates that Q&A setting and, and it makes it so much easier for, for somebody like me. Mm-hmm. And it's a freaking bargain, by the way. Okay, well, listen, we're just so proud of the journey that you guys have taken that we spur the moment and said, hey, be on the show. Guys, for context, by the way, you wonder how this happened? You already heard how they kind of worked themselves into our life by adding value, all that fun stuff. But we were sitting in the backyard, literally just going through a couple of things in their business because they've done a couple of things for us. We said, hey, come do a jam session. We'll help you with your business. And Lori said, she's like, hey, we have to do it. He said, she said, we want to ask you about your background and, and why podcasting is so important. And that's how we ended up here. So you never know how you're going to end up somewhere. But thank you so much for just being you guys mm-hmm. and for sharing that story, especially the vulnerable part in the beginning. So I think it's really important to encourage everybody listening to amplify their message. Mm-hmm. Don't wait till you think you're an expert. Don't wait till you think you deserve to, quote, teach other people. <laughs> you're most relatable when you're in your journey, not after you've made your journey. So get in front of a mic, even if it's your cell phone and start your podcast. Mm -hmm. If anyone's inspired by what you guys are doing, where can they find you? Easiest place to find us is at the good in media on Instagram. That's the best place to connect at the good in media, the good in media on Instagram. So send you a DM and you guys will help them out. Yep. We'll take care of you. Love it. Looks like a smiley face on the logo. So that's us. All right, guys, hit them up at the good in media on Instagram. Thanks for listening. We always love and appreciate you. Bye guys. We'll see you next week. 
Thanks for listening. And if you loved this episode and know of someone else who is as successful as they are generous, please pass them on to me. It would mean the world to me if you help me get this cause and this message out to as many listeners as I can. So please, if you liked what you heard, it goes a long way if you take 30 seconds and leave me a five-star review and share this with your friends. I'll be forever grateful. And until the next episode, cheers to your success.